And then for those presenting this evening, when your item arrives, please come to the podium, state your name and affiliation prior to the beginning, and we appreciate your cooperation and hope you enjoy the meeting. So let's start the meeting with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a brief moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sure. Okay, so we don't have a lot on the agenda this evening, which I know everybody's disappointed about. Um, but uh, our first item is the uh, consent agenda from uh, item number 2020-14, minutes from the February 10th meeting. I make a motion to accept the entirety of the consent agenda. All right. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So the minutes are approved. Um, public comments? Are there any public comments? Okay. Any public comments? Um, so that brings us to our new business items. Um, first of one being 2020-15, uh, and this is to consider and discuss and act on awarding the bid for the Cooper Park Splash Pad. So I guess, Jared, do you want to talk about that? Sure. <coughs> so, um, just a quick background, uh, we were awarded a Community Parks Playgrounds grant, as you might remember, for the splash pad. Um, we uh, went out to bid and received four uh, total bids on the 12th, and when they were due, um, of which uh, two stood out over the, over the other two, so we kind of had to narrow it down from those two. Um, <clears throat> and I go into a little bit about it in my summary. Um, um, so these two included DRD pool management, and their total uh, cost proposal was two hundred forty thousand and two hundred forty thousand. And Viva pools with a total cost proposal of two hundred forty nine nine hundred seventy five. Both of these companies, to me, um, were good. They both could do the job properly. It seemed to me. What set DRD uh, pools a little bit above and beyond um, were really just two things. Uh, the references I was able to call, I called references on both. Uh, both, both were good references, but uh, the ones that um, were given for DRD, specifically for the project manager um, of DRD, Keith, I believe is his name, were just very good. They're very good references. As well as he has direct, um, a lot of direct experience with this particular type of, of project. Um, and to me, that just kind of set him a little, a little apart from the other company. Um, that was one. The cost, actually, to be honest, wasn't, to me, what put them over the top because I feel like both came in within our budget, both had a good, um, a good summary of what they could give us for the amount of money, and I feel like they were both flexible on certain things. So that wasn't necessarily what, what did it, although $9,000 is a lot of money that they came, came under. But uh, it just had to do with the references and the, and the specific um, uh, amount of projects that Keith, in particular, who is the project manager for this, has, has done. And that just kind of set them, set them over to me. Awesome. Any, qu any questions on either of these? Um, so I, I have a few questions. Sir. Um, I don't see the other two proposals. Were the other two proposals more costly? Yes. Well, okay. So one was much more costly. Mm -hmm. um, and actually a, a, a company that um, I was hoping would, would apply and has also a lot of, uh, a lot of background in this particular uh, type of project. But they, uh, they came in quite high. Uh, they actually gave us two separate proposals. The one um, that would have worked for us was up around three hundred fifty thousand. Okay. So it was very high. And then they gave us a second price that was kind of around our price range, but wasn't nearly as much as uh, these top two companies were giving. And then the fourth um, was a company I've never heard of. Their proposal was uh, incomplete, okay. um, and and uh, just didn't give us the information we needed. So in terms of background, so the decision to install the splash pad was before I got on the council. So I'm wondering if I could have a little bit of history in reference to this. I know we got the $150,000 uh, grant that did not require uh, any type of matching funds. Um, and it I noticed it also... Does. It does. It does. Okay. Parks Playgrounds does have a match, but we have a match included. 
Okay. So our, we actually have a hundred thousand dollar match of town funding that was approved in last year's budget, um, and so this total project cost will be two hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Of which one hundred and fifty is uh, grant. Grant. So I noticed in the budget um, four twenty, there's two hundred thousand dollars that was allotted on the town budget page or whatever. Yeah. And that, so do we have that number? I, I know exactly what you're talking about, and actually Joe and I talked briefly about this as well. That number is incorrect um, because what, what was actually approved was 100000 And I can't remember, and this is something we'll have to go back and, and check, but um, there was already in the CIP from last year a certain amount for Cooper Park that was allocated. I can't remember exactly what it was for, but we moved that over to this project, and the total town match was $100,000. But I, I noticed that as well that it only said fifty. But I, that well, number is what we had. Some money. It doesn't yeah. say fifty on the town documents uh, that are out there for the public to view, which is the one that I looked at. Um, Cooper Splash Pad uh, for capital outlay within parks is calling for two hundred thousand, not fifty, not some other number. My, I don't know what that means exactly. If that's well, that goes back to my 50 because the 150 is still grant. And so I, that's that that extra 50 for the to equal the 200 is 50,000 out of the the uh, town's budget. But that's incorrect. So 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 I'm not I'm not following the budget. Is this $200,000 of town money no. or is this 200,000 total? total? Total. It's that's 100, the total. 50 grant plus yes. 50 from the So uh, yeah, you're seeing town. grant. I I see your question. So that's I'm part. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, you're seeing grant as well as town. Okay, so that's all part of it in that's there. That's correct. Yep. So where's the other fifty? That was from last year. That was that was a hundred thousand is what what was approved for this project last year. I think it was just written as fifty because uh, I had noticed that as well. But on other documentation that I have, it says a hundred on it. So and I, so, so I guess I'm asking the question on the delta of fifty thousand. Are we okay or not okay? Um, do we need to make a diff? A, uh, like I noticed that so, there's other, so there was money in there for it that was uh, as part of the the Warfield deal. And is that, I'm I'm thinking that's where Aretha had originally intended this money to come from, perhaps. But because yeah. uh, there I was the a two hundred fifty thousand dollar for park improvements at Miller Cooper Park, yeah. and the intent was is to bring to make that kind of our premier park, and then to also make it in close proximity to the new townhomes, you know, and tie it together so it's kind of in the mm -hmm. middle. So there's, there's, I think the plan was is to take a hundred thousand dollars from that fund, um, and so you're correct. Yes, yeah, and then to match that with the grant, so then that was two fifty, and then then there'll still be another hundred and fifty thousand dollars in that funds that we're hoping to we were talking about using stormwater improvements and things that needed to happen at that location with the state in the Springfield Avenue project. So I think that's kind of what her plan was, and that way we could show a good faith effort of putting that money into the close proximity park and the splash pad turned out to be like something intuitive and interesting and no you're correct and thank you for bringing that up mayor to be honest i, I did not bring that up and I, I did in my last staff report on this which was quite a long time ago now but yeah that 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 funding is specific to cooper park from the warfield funds that right i was talking yeah, I mean that was the intention of it. Yeah, proximity, it was, yeah. right? It can proximity. be spent in proximity. Yeah, the proximity, the idea, and that was really what the intent was: is to try to, you know, from that project, offer something that people could get to relatively through the tunnel, and you know. So I guess, I guess my question is still outstanding: Do we have the funds this year to be able to pay? For the two hundred and fifty thousand altogether, all in number. Yeah, There's we already have the capital. Budget. Yeah, it's our, the, we do have the money. Yeah. Okay. If it's written incorrectly, we might need to change. I, see, I have documentation that has different numbers than that, and so if that's the official one, we can easily work on on make changes sure. those numbers. But the sure. money's there. I realize that. Yeah, the money's there. Okay. Um, is there any questions about the project itself? I know we've talked a little bit about it over the last few months, but uh, so did we get a final feature sheet, or is this the one? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, no, that's not final. Uh, okay. Th these are just. Uh, you know, um, so proposed, proposed, yeah, proposed, basically, because yeah. we now, now we did give them. Would however, be cool to see like the final thing, like we did with South Branch right before we did the playground. Oh, uh, we will. We're going to get a full rendering of what okay. it will look like uh, once we and who's nail selecting down the features. Uh, who's what? What group of kids is selecting the features? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think 
we already have an idea of what type of features we want to have. I mean, it, it hasn't changed since the beginning of, of you know, when we were talking to the Parks Department and things like that. We're relatively in the same ballpark. Um, now, different uh, manufacturers do have different styles of these types of, of uh, equipment, so that may change a little bit from what we originally thought. However, the idea is going to remain the same. I mean, we're going to try to have small stations. Um, they're not all just going to be shooting out of the ground. We're going to have actual equipment that, uh, like a the tunnel like feature, the I think you have on there, the cool buckets that dump. Um, yeah. So, yeah. the the overall um, goal right. of what you see in that picture is what we're going to try to stick to. But the equipment itself may change. How big is the splash pad going to be? About twenty five hundred square feet. Okay, cool. Well, I got to tell you, when we were doing uh, for the If I Were a Mayor contest up at the elementary school, that was the thing that got the most excitement from the response from the kids was the fourth graders was splash pad. Yeah. Where? <laughs> so, well, no, uh, it's it's a unique it's, uh, project around cool. around here, and I, I think uh, yeah. you know if we can get the word out, it'll be it'll be used quite a bit. Yeah. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. yeah. yeah so it's, it's and alongside, cool. you know, with some of these other projects we're doing here at, at this park, I mean, I think really which hopefully will all be done by this summer um mm -hmm. you know it'll be it'll be a good uh, a good mix good yes mix. oh that's the other thing so when do you think this is going to break ground when what's the timeline um i don't have a specific timeline because i want to meet with if if we're good to go with drd i want to meet with them first to make sure nothing has changed kind of work out a timeline with them now, this type of project is weather permitting. I mean, because you, you know you have a lot of infrastructure work you have to do. You have to get an un underground tank and things like that. But with the weather we've been having, <laughs> uh, you could very easily break ground, ground very soon. And we're talking again. I don't have a specific timeline, but by summer okay. is is the plan. I mean, open by summer. Open by summer. Okay. No, open by summer is the plan. Right. Now, again, yeah, we'd like to see that happen. Right, right. Right. You know, you can't guarantee. You, of course, things come up, but. That is the plan. So from start to finish, with weather permitting, what, what's the time frame that the contractors think it will take? Once they start construction, I mean, if it goes smoothly, you, mm -hmm. you know, you're talking maybe, you know, you could get, get it all done in three months. Mm -hmm. Now, again, that's if it goes smoothly. Okay. We're, we, there's a lot of infrastructure questions we still kind of have that we have to work with them on, some engineering. Um, so it, it depends on how long that takes, some of the pre-construction work. But, um, you know, best case scenario as far as when construction starts, you could definitely get it done in three months. Well, and I have been told that specifically from a contractor, so. Will the park be closed that entire duration? No. So they're able to... They'll close off that area. area. Yeah, okay. that they're, work, they're, they're working on, but the park itself will still be open. Okay. Yeah. And to be honest with you, we're hoping to kind of have uh, the playground, the new playground, uh, in there before this will be completed, the splash pad will be completed, so that new playground will still be open mm -hmm. as well, so. The Does the three months include permitting? I'm gonna say three months of construction, so anything pre-construction, I don't know how long that's gonna take, because a lot of time that's up to the state or the county where you're getting the permits. Mm -hmm. So uh, and as far as engineering and some permitting and things like that, it just depends on how long that takes uh, and how much detail we go into them on, on the engineering. So if we're going back and forth constantly on, on our vision, it may take a little longer, but if we can click and kind of come up with a with a plan relatively quickly, then we can jump right into the construction portion. So that's why I'm at, I'm asking about the permitting process. Um, do we have an idea of how long it's going to take to get design? We have an idea on design. So as far as the actual design of, of the splash pad and the equipment, we have an idea and they know we have an idea, so that shouldn't take too long. Whatever site work that needs to be done as far as some engineering as for, as for the utilities, that's what may take a little bit longer. We don't have an official site plan uh, of this park. Uh, if we did, this would be much easier. Um, so some engineering work is gonna have to be done first. Um, again, depending on how long that takes, that's not really up to us, that's sure. up to the engineer, that's up to the, uh, the county. But if things go smoothly, um, we can, as far as the, um, the look of the splash pad and things like that, that can be done relatively quickly. So as long as the other two <laughs> parts of it don't take too long, um, you know, we could get it done easily in 30 days if things go smoothly. Yeah. Again, I, I hate to give you guys timelines just because they change so rapidly, you know what I mean? So Yeah, um, no, I think we're just trying to get an idea of what... The, we, the idea is to be open by this summer, fire, when, right? when around the times a pool would normally be open. 
the reason I'm bringing it up is because you know the press is here, yeah. and we want to make sure that we're mess we're managing expectations yeah. uh, for the splash pad. And what I'm hearing you say, and correct me if I'm wrong, is let's say 30 days for design. Mm -hmm. That'd be pretty ambitious. Uh, another 30 days for say permitting, which would be pretty ambitious. Now we're talking the end of April uh, for the time where you start construction, and three mm -hmm. months from then is the end of July. So then when we say summer, we're saying not the whole summer for when it could be in. And that'd be maybe... And that could very well happen, don't get me wrong. And that's sure. why that's why I'm, I'm hesitant about giving you guys exact dates. Sure. But again, I will say that our plan absolutely is to have it open by the beginning of summer. Or okay. Around when uh, you would open a pool. Now again, I don't know that that can happen. It, a lot of factors sure. are coming to play before we know that for sure. But that is our plan. So we will work as hard as we can on our end for sure to get mm -hmm. make that happen. And then I'm guessing since Public Works is probably going to be in charge of taking care of this thing, or you guys coordinate with uh, like where you want the infrastructure and all that stuff and how it's going to work. We've talked about that. We, we've talked about it briefly. Okay. Uh, they will also, as part of their uh, DRD's uh, proposal, there is some training involved in that that the, uh, Public Works would be a part of. Um, so storage of different chemicals, training on the equipment. Um, it's an automatic um, chemical uh, mix mixing. I, I don't know the technical term for it, but it mixes the chemicals. Or, yeah, it like chlorinates and other the other chemicals that have to go into it. So, um, on how to use that type of equipment, uh, we'll, we'll be trained on that. Yeah, and then I guess if you could talk to the references and find out some of the any of the pitfalls that they had with the like, oh, if I did put the, the cream in place in the right spot, just to make sure the logistical things I think might be a good idea to. Uh, I have, I, we have, as you remember last summer, we did a lot of uh, site visits on different, right. different splash pads in the relative area. And so we got a lot of questions uh, answered that I had. Um, you know, of course our, we're, every, every project's unique in its own way, yeah. uh, as far as the, the uh, layout and things like that. But we have put a lot of, a lot of thought into into the way uh, the easiest way to kind of maintain these types of really uh, cool. splash pads yeah. All right. cool. so my only uh, request Jared would be that as a liaison to the Cycle Parks and Rec uh, committee mm -hmm. uh, that uh, maybe if you could keep me posted as things move along so that I could yeah. bring that information back to yeah what I could do is I can I can let you know when we get a kind of a at least a final preliminary plan on, on uh, the specifications, That'd be things great. like that, I'll let you know. And whether you want me to show that at a meeting or if you'd like to come and present that to them when that's prepared. Yeah, that either one, great. I don't mind doing that. I can come, come present it. I mean, once once we kind of, Joe and I talk about how we'd like to, you know, as long as we, we think it's gonna be basically the final or at least, at least close to the final uh, plan to where maybe only small tweaks can be made, right. I'll, uh, I'll definitely present it. Yeah, let the whole council know. I think we'd all want to know. Yes. I mean, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just walking around, somebody's like, what's going on down at the sure. park there? And they're yeah. like, uh, they're digging a hole. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of hole. Just don't walk in it. So, I mean, it's uh, a good, good hole. It's good for all of us to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. great. Yeah, we'll Some of the kids might just go splash in the hole. I know, just fill it up with the hose, right? right? It'll be fun. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'll, make a, <laughs> I'll make a motion to uh, approve 2020-15 uh, to DRD. Pool management, a total cost of $240,000. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, uh, Jared, yeah. before yeah. you leave, sure. I was going to ask you, and I, it might be in here and I overlooked it. Is DRP providing any type of service guarantee or warranty? The, the um, equipment is, has a warranty on it, yes. Okay, will they come back and, and service it if there's any yes. type of failure? The, the manufacturer will. Okay. So, so, for instance, uh, some of the more complex uh, uh, metal uh, parts have like a very long warranty on it. I want to say 20 years or mm -hmm. something like that. Some of the plastic pieces are less than that. So, so there is a list of what type of pieces and how much of a warranty. And that actually is, that is included in the full packet. We did not give you guys the full okay. packet. Just for, you know, we didn't want to print everything out, but uh, that is all included in that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yeah, that's a good question. So there's, is there like service warranty on the like work from end there? That is a good question. Like on the pad itself? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they, I mean, as a company, they have the typical insurance and, and, and uh, you know, uh, warranties on what they're doing. But the I'm talking more the equipment itself, like the pieces that are gonna be 
Yeah, yeah well, we were talking about like the, I think we were talking about the pad and the uh, chlorinating equipment and all that kind of stuff. Is that all part of the manufacturer's warranty, or is that? Well, that's not. Did they give you like a one year warranty, warranty or something? Or? Uh, I don't know. You know, I don't think we specifically in the RFP talked about um, how long. The, the, well, that'd be their a but in, the, in a we contract, to make sure yeah, yeah. Some sort well, of a lot of times in a contract that we give them, like in their notice to proceed, we'll put something like your your work has to last for two years or whatever the case may be. Right. So a lot of times that's the time you do it, not necessarily an RFP process. Okay, we did it then, but yeah, we, no, we but certainly good, we certainly good, can good in the point in the, to bring uh, up notice yeah. to proceed. We can do that. Okay, all right. Okay. So thank you for all the work. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. I'm excited yeah. about it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I know when uh, Aretha said she's going to come back when you get Yeah, she's, she, we, she's been in to touch. We, we've we'll talked about it. it. Yeah, we've yeah. talked about it. All right. That's all right. awesome. Okay. Thank yeah, you. thanks a lot. Okay, so our next item is uh, 2015. 2020-15, is that right? 16. 16, I'm sorry. Uh, this is the introduction of ordinance number 2020-03 for the uh, fiscal year 2020 budget revisions. And I guess, Joe, you want to... Yes, first budget ahead. revision of the year. Uh, again, it's relatively minor in that we're reducing overall expenditures and uh, revenues by 20544 uh, I tried to give you a little bit of detail there in the memo. Uh, the biggest items there were the revenues, the, I guess the biggest off there was the um, uh, impact fees. Uh, again, building there at Warfield just hasn't been quite as robust as I guess what we thought when we originally set that budget. Uh, I think we were planning on around 40 townhomes being pulled in this fiscal year, and right now we're thinking more like 18 to 20. Um, and then I guess the biggest expenditure that we took away was, um, uh, I guess, a rebranding effort. And again, with all the focus kind of being on the master plan, I didn't think rebranding was something that we, could, we were going to really focus on this fiscal year. Uh, again, it could be something we add in at a future date, but um, again, we just wanted to go ahead and take that uh, expenditure out. Um, but I did try to give all the detail from all the other uh, adjustments that were made. Um, so again, if anybody has any questions, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, the, uh, the, the bigger items are, are listed there in the ordinance. Yeah, you're going to have a blizzard in here because we're... I know. I know. Yeah, yeah. Worry about jinxing. Jinx the sun. Knock on wood all day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, think, I think I told you already, but I just want to say it publicly. I, the new format for the budget amendment I thought it was very helpful. Really understand what's going on with the money and really appreciate it. So. Good. Good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, didn't, I guess I didn't really know how you guys had it done before, but this is kind of what I'm used to. So Craig and I worked on it. And, Hopefully, uh, you have everything you need there. Mm -hmm. And we had some conversations about the rebranding, and I think with the master plan, I think as Joe said, yeah. it's going to be probably a little more than we budgeted initially for the uh, to really get a comprehensive process going. So we're kind of lumping that money together. So I think he's going to bring that to you subsequently. Yes. But just to get you prepared a little bit for that, <laughs> just, <laughs> just to, so it's not like a shock. <laughs> but. Um, I think we'll be checking more boxes off on the things that we want to accomplish through the process. So. Correct. Okay. So, somebody want to make a, a motion to accept the budget revisions? A motion to accept uh, the budget revisions 2020-16, ordinance number 2020-03. Second. 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 Pick one. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Yeah, thanks again, Joe. Great, appreciate it very much. Okay, next item is the uh, next mayor and town council meeting is on Monday, March 9th, right here, 2020. We have uh, some volunteer opportunities still on the HTC, BZA, uh, the Spark, the Police Auxiliary, and still in need of a crossing guard. So anybody interested can email uh, town at sykesville.net for more information about volunteering. Um, and then staff updates. So, Chief, public safety report. Or do you want to do staff updates first? I'm sorry. Oh, Chief, go first. You guys saw that ordinance? Yeah. Yeah. No, so you all just introduced it. So that's just a normal ordinance. Yeah. Same process. Thank you. We'll adopt it next time. Mm -hmm. Good evening, everyone. Chief Swalwell. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Right. We're going to talk about the public safety report covering the period February 4th through the 17th. During that period, we had a total of 395 events, of which I'll just highlight some of the some of the highlights. Five assist other agency, only three community policing e events. I'm hoping that'll increase as the warmer weather uh, arrives. 
Uh, 16 incident reports, which are in your packet. Uh, 232 patrol checks, 33 traffic enforcement initiatives. Um, any questions you may have about any of the 16 incident reports in your packet? Chief, I have a question concerning the fatalities over at Village Road. Mm -hmm. It looked like that there was two. The same, same day. It was a very the odd same, occurrence. Okay, in the just same wasn't place. sure if there was a typo or not. No. no same building, same day, hours apart. Very, very unusual. And for sad. That to happen. And yes. Sad. Yes, it is. Were both natural causes? Yes. Yeah. I remember seeing the one. Any other questions? No, but I have a comment. Uh, the one about the 10 year old girl that made the paper. And the yes. new officer got a, <laughs> Thank you for that. Got some um, very nice publicity. And it was nice. looked sterling in that. And every, nothing but smiles. Well, that's, that's the way we like things to end that way. Yeah. How long was the girl stuck in the. Uh, <laughs> 20, 30 minutes, it wasn't that bad. Oh, uh, that's good. But um, I'm glad our officers used their discretion and called the fire department instead of trying to cut her out of that seat themselves and let the professionals do the, you know, the, the heavy lifting. But uh, thankfully, she was removed with that injury. So, yeah, happy ending. Oh, good. Absolutely. Yeah. It wasn't very long because yeah. we, we saw them pass our house and we're like, what's right. going on? Yeah. Now they're gone. Right. I'm sure to her, it seemed like an eternity. You're stuck in a swing seat. So, yeah. Yeah. I did want to say that uh, the Shiver Shuffle went very well. Uh, I was very honored to actually participate this year along with uh, local Special Olympic athlete Nicole Hurley. And I'm uh, very proud to say that we both finished. Uh, her right ahead of me. Uh, but it was a, a wonderful experience. And that was actually her first 5K that she'd ever participated in. And uh, she was, needless to say, she was very happy to to complete it. And uh, there were several times where I gave her an opportunity and we had the auxiliary vehicle following us. And I said, Nicole, if you want to take a break, you know, the car's right here. You can jump in for a minute. Nobody will know. <laughs> no, no, I want to keep going. And you were just trying God to be a worship. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. I was hoping. I'm to take a break here. <laughs> I was hoping to take me up on that. But uh, she, uh, she was a real trooper and uh, finished, finished the race. Yeah, so awesome. it, was, it was a good event. Yeah, so you both ran up Oklahoma Avenue? I didn't say we ran there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Brisk as long as you got up there. So as long as you made it. Traversed Oklahoma. <laughs> Traverse. Okay. Yeah. 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 I was going to say, that thing is, uh, shoot. I was I like, man, that's, that's a beast. tough run. Yeah. You get to go out and we'll warm up first before you go up there, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Go down a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll see her again uh, this spring when we do the torch run. So uh, looking forward to that as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Is that it? Oh, Thank you very man. much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Okay. Any staff updates? Uh, really just a, a, a few minor ones. Uh, I did get a phone call regarding uh, noise in town. Somebody called and complained about a neighbor, you know, making too much noise and was asking about ordinances. I don't know if this is a conversation that the town has had before, but uh, <coughs> regarding, you know, a noise ordinance, we do not currently have one on the books. Uh, so that might be something we start looking into here in the near future just to be able to address it when it does come up. This was a one incident thing where it doesn't seem to be something that's ongoing, but again, when you, when you identify a potential void in the ordinance is there, you want to try to fill it up. So again, uh, just something to put on your radar. Uh, and then everything else is, I'm still waiting for feedback on a few things on, uh, you know, I haven't heard back from Howard County yet on the, uh, the park, uh, the South Branch Park, the uh, project that we approved last time and uh, still getting some final details on the lighting project. And then once I get all that done, I'll send it out to everybody and we'll get, we'll get to work. Did Janet come back? Jan is back, she came back today. All right, yeah, how's that trooper? Uh, yeah, she, she worked all day, it was all great. Right. Yeah, it was nice to have her back in the office. So. All right. On the first floor. She's doing well? <laughs> she's, she's doing very well. Still a little, little stiff. Uh, little stiff. Uh, and I guess that's expected after a knee replacement, but uh, again, I think she's in good spirits. And, mm, good. Excellent. As an occupational therapist, I would recommend she gets upstairs as soon as possible so that she gets that range of motion. <laughs> there you go. She said she has physical therapy like scheduled Good. for you know the rest of the year, so yeah, she'll, she'll get a lot of work. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Uh, council committee reports. I guess we'll start down your end. Sounds good. Uh, so there was no homeowners association meeting this last round. Uh, the next one will be in March. I've already let the president know that I will not be attending. Um, I'll be out of the country. 
I'll actually miss the next uh, council meeting as well. Um, and then with Maryland Municipal League, uh, the bulk of the work was uh, completed by the committee. Uh, All together, we reviewed somewhere around 160 to 170 bills. Um, all of those bills that are being tracked by Maryland Municipal League are on their website. There are some of interest uh, based on some email traffic uh, that I saw, one of them in reference to uh, parks uh, that uh, we were looking to weigh in on. Um, and then there's a few others uh, that I've shared uh, with some of the council members as uh, I deemed appropriate through the process. Uh, there, are, there are some other meetings that are gonna be happening um, in March, um, and where I can, I will be participating by uh, voicemail or by a conference call. That's it. HDC, we have a meeting tomorrow night here at the townhouse at seven o'clock, and we only have one application. Okay, and there's no update right now from the historic gate house and the colored schoolhouse. It's kind of a slow time of year, but things will be ramping up soon. So, uh, and I did, uh, we did send a letter uh, for the one issue for the parks and playground, uh, um, I guess, sh uh, showing our uh, lack of support for that bill. So, so we did write that and send that well, out. Well, it's interesting to note that the, the splash pad grant, the grant we received for right. the splash pad that was discussed earlier this evening was funded through that grant process for the parks and playground. Right. And um, um, I mean, I don't know if you want to elaborate on what bill it is you're speaking of. So this was House Bill 203 or 230? I'm, I'm not remembering right 203. off 203. I'm going to just go with that because I think that's one on the top of my mind. So, but we, so and it is uh, with the Baltimore County and Howard County's uh, efforts to get access to the community parks and playground money that only municipalities currently have access to. But it will greatly deplete that fund without additional funds and in this environment I don't think additional funds are going to be placed into that so um, we've shared our concerns with our senator um, Katie Hester and and the chair of the committee um, Kumar Barbe so we sent them a letter and, and you know so we're, we're hopeful mm -hmm. keeping our fingers crossed that um, that fund stays intact as it is some of some of the additional background on that is that uh, the total funding in that allotment is about two point five million dollars, and um, you know for uh, you know two counties that already received quite a bit of money through the county portion, which is significantly more. Um, you know it's you know the municipalities need those funds if they're going to be doing any types of park improvements um, in the hundred fifty seven different municipalities across the state. So. Um, I mean, Thank you for the support. And, and I think it's also important to note that, that Sykesville has um, reaped the benefits of, of that right. grant yep. um, two prior, at least that I'm aware of in recent years, two times yeah, prior right. with the and linear And we put the money in Howard County, some of it. Yeah, so, with I mean, the linear trail like, improvements in that's, there. That's the other point that I made, Cam, yeah. is, you know, we're, you're the, Howard County is already benefiting from it in that sense. With so. our new playground in Pavilion right. and South Branch Park. Yeah. yeah, so, and they will continue to if... Okay. All right. Uh, the merchants, we had a meeting here Friday at uh, 9 o'clock uh, with the mayor and to meet, to meet uh, the town manager, Joe. We had a good showing. We had about 10 people. As Joe mentioned in the uh, recap, it was a good meeting. Um, next merchant meeting is uh, this Friday at uh, 9 o'clock. I'll be there. And March 6th is Harry Potter Trivia Night down on Main Street, Chief, just to let you know. Uh, six to nine on the first Friday merchant, so it should just be a little bit more traffic downtown. And okay. be a good event. Come on out. The uh, planning commission, we already had our meeting, but I do have a question for Joe. Have you, you may have seen, I included you in an email where I re reminded them of your request. Have you gotten a response yet? I've not heard anything back yet, but again, we do have time still, so, so well, I'll send a reminder out to them. That's all. What is that with you? Oh, I mentioned last time we met. There was just a, said the, the media the steering committee. For those of you who are not here, there was a request by um, Joe. Joe's steering committee. This so, former steering committee, and we're looking for names, and um, the planning commission is considering who. I pointed out that being the newest guy, I'm the least qualified, but I'm willing to serve. And I was hoping to get someone who knew what they were doing um, to counteract that. 
but we haven't gotten names yet. Why would we want that? <laughs> so you're it, buddy. Naive, <laughs> naive experience is sometimes best because I have a fresh uh, perspective. That's right. The fact that I don't know what I'm doing is not a good thing, but in this case, it might be. Anyway. Okay. Um, so, uh, Spark meets uh, this Thursday, the 27th, um, for the first time in a few months, actually. Um, and uh, we will be discussing um, our event schedule for 2020 um, to include the Movies in the Park selections of movies um, and working on perhaps. Uh, looking for another sponsor to fund our movies because of increasing costs associated with some of the movies that we would like to uh, be able to show this uh, season. Um, working on um, acquiring some um, identifying best for the volunteers, for the Spark uh, volunteers for, 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 for our events. And um, I think that's probably the, oh, and we're going to discuss our current budget. That is what's happening at 7 p.m. here on the 27th this Thursday. Okay. And then one other thing that I wanted to mention, um, they reached out to me about a human resource person that could be representing South Carroll. And so I thought I'd mention that to you. So if anybody's interested, it was a little bit of meeting commitment. but And it's to get some of, like, for homeless, shelter, kind of some of the resources into, there's no representative from Southern Carroll, so. Um, in Spark? Uh, no, it's not part of the Spark. That's what I, was, I have no, no idea no, what no, you're talking about. No, this is not for Park related, but this is for. Um, for what? Yeah. Is it a volunteer? General. Yeah, it's a volunteer. Oh, okay. Somebody to serve on a committee. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> another not volunteer need. It's Amongst another volunteer need, listening. right? It's a human okay. resource representative from our area. So she reached out to me. I said I would think about somebody that I could maybe recommend. Somebody, that, I think it's like a Thursday morning. Um, maybe it's, it's a, I'll get you the details if you're interested, but. I'm not how to send it. Does it need to be from like the town government? Not from the town. No, just anybody. anybody. Okay. Anybody. So i will put it out there. So if, if you you're thinking it's today, put it on the website. Yeah, 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 I'll put it out. But so I told her I'd let her know by the next time they meet, which is in March. So if uh, I figured, well, maybe people are listening, they may contact. You can contact Carrie at town at sykesville.net, and then uh, you know, so it might be enough. But it, and if you guys can think of anybody that might be good for that, let me know. All right. And I'm sorry for the ping ponging because back to Spark. I know that there's going to be a question about replacing that um, chat, the baby swing that had to be cut out, um, cut off. So we'll probably we, want to. We have. We, we, have care of. we had a spare and took care of it. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> okay. And uh, so that's it, right? That's all that's on the agenda. So there's no closed session agenda this evening. We're Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> okay. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all for coming.